Dragon, America's only spacecraft reliable enough to carry astronauts into space since the space shuttle, is about to embark on a major new mission. What milestone will SpaceX's ship reach this time? And will Starliner ever catch up? Watch until the end to find out. On December 19th, Vast announced on their X account a deal with SpaceX to launch two astronauts to the International Space Station, ISS. SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket is set to launch up to two Dragon missions to the ISS to assist VAS' upcoming bid for NASA's private astronaut missions, PAM. NASA's PAM strategy, introduced in 2019, aims to boost the low Earth orbit, LEO, space economy, and demonstrate the potential of commercial destinations. It provides industry partners with key insights into LEO mission costs, operations, crew selection, training, planning, management, cargo integration, and crew health protocols. So far, the agency has awarded four PAM opportunities, all to Axiom Space, with little to no competition from other providers. For VAST, getting NASA to approve these two missions was extremely important. The company plans to use additional ISS missions with NASA to tap into the agency's expertise, collaborate with private and international partners through NASA's PAM program, and strengthen existing relationships. This is a key step as VAST prepares to compete with its Haven 2 design in NASA's upcoming commercial Low Earth Orbit Destinations, CLLD, Phase 2 program, aimed at selecting a successor to the ISS, Max Hout, the chief executive officer of VAST, stated, Enabling payload and crewed missions to the ISS is a key part of VAST strategy, allowing us to further our collaboration with NASA and global space agencies. These missions not only strengthen our expertise in human spaceflight operations and collaboration with NASA, but also position VAST as a leading contender to deliver the next generation successor to the ISS, advancing the future of human space exploration. Using SpaceX's Falcon 9 and Dragon human spaceflight system, the VAST PM mission is poised to accomplish several NASA objectives. These include expanding the number of PAM providers, broadly disseminating the knowledge and experience gained from conducting PAM missions, and assisting NASA in further advancing its goal of fostering a LEO space economy. VAST announced that its agreement with SpaceX for crew Dragon missions to the ISS is supplementary to a previous contract with the company to launch its Haven 1 module and at least one Crew Dragon mission to the module in 2025. On SpaceX's side, Gwyn Shotwell, SpaceX's president and chief operating officer, stated, I am excited to work with VAST as they build more opportunities and destinations for more people to travel amongst the stars. If Haven 2 becomes the successor to the ISS in the future, this mission will be known as an important link and a turning point in the history of space exploration. The contract with VAST demonstrates that SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft is again trusted to make history. Its modern and safe design is the key factor that makes Crew Dragon so reliable. SpaceX, to significantly reduce space transportation costs, designed the Dragon spacecraft to be reusable rather than discarded, as is common with most spacecraft. It consists of a reusable capsule and a disposable trunk. SpaceX and NASA initially certified the capsule for use in five missions. As of March 2024, they are working on certifying it for up to 15 missions. Crew Dragon is capable of autonomous operation. SpaceX and NASA state that it is capable of carrying seven astronauts, but in normal operations, it carries two to four crew members. The Crew Dragon features eight side-mounted Super Draco engines as part of its emergency escape system, removing the need for a traditional disposable escape tower. Additionally, instead of placing the essential and costly life support, thruster, and propellant storage systems in a disposable service module, Dragon 2 integrates these components within the capsule for reuse. The trunk acts as an adapter between the capsule and the Falcon 9 rocket's second stage and also contains solar panels, a heat dissipation radiator, and fins for aerodynamic stability during emergency aborts. The spacecraft's nose cone protects the docking port and thrusters during ascent and reentry and pivots open for in-space operations. Its propellant and helium pressurant are stored in composite carbon overwrapped titanium tanks in the service section. For aborts, Eight Super Draco engines provide 71 knots of thrust, 
while 16 smaller Draco thrusters handle attitude control and orbital maneuvers. During reentry, a Pika 3 heat shield protects the capsule. Dragon 2 uses 6 parachutes, 2 drogues, and 4 mains for deceleration before splashdown. Super Draco thrusters are also available as a backup for parachute failure. Since 2020, SpaceX has been the leader in launching crews to space for NASA. These flights included many firsts like Inspiration 4, the first fully commercial space flight, and Axiom 1, the first fully commercial mission to the ISS. As of December 2024, there have been 15 crewed orbital flights of a Crew Dragon spacecraft, and this number is only likely to increase in the future. In addition to the two PAM missions mentioned above, nine more Dragon flights are planned in the coming years, including the Polaris 2 mission and the Haven 1 mission, which will be operational in 2025 and carry four astronauts to the station. Crew Dragon has consistently delivered reliable, cost-effective services, surpassing traditional space programs and solidifying SpaceX's leadership in commercial space travel. It is seen as a vital asset for NASA and other space agencies, contributing to the future of human space exploration. Meanwhile, the spacecraft known as Dragon's rival, Starliner, is having embarrassing performances. Rewind to about 10 years ago, when NASA awarded SpaceX a $2.6 billion contract to build a crew vehicle. Around the same time, Boeing received a contract for the same purpose. Except this time NASA gave Boeing a whopping $4.2 billion. At the time, this made sense, as SpaceX was still a young private company with no prior experience building human-carrying spacecraft. On the other side, Boeing is a multinational corporation that designs, manufactures, and sells airplanes, rotorcraft, rockets, satellites, and missiles worldwide. It's also among the largest global aerospace manufacturers. They were supposed to beat SpaceX to space by a long shot due to their decades of experience with the shuttle and ISS. However, the Starliner journey is littered with stories of disappointment and sadness. Originally planned to be operational in 2017, Starliner has been repeatedly delayed by problems in management and engineering. The first uncrewed orbital flight test in December 2019 was deemed a partial failure, leading to a second orbital flight test in May 2022. During the crew flight test launched in June 2024, the Starliner's thrusters malfunctioned on approach to the ISS and NASA concluded that it was too risky to return its astronauts to Earth aboard the spacecraft, which landed uncrewed in September 2024. You might think the problem Starliner has had, or the reason Starliner performed worse than SpaceX's spacecraft, is because its design is less advanced than Dragon's. In reality, it is the opposite. The Starliner design is considered excellent on paper. The spacecraft features a reusable capsule and expendable service module for LEO missions. The capsule holds seven passengers, or a mix of crew and cargo. The Starliner capsule has a weldless spun-form structure and is reusable up to 10 times with a six-month turnaround. Starliner features the NASA docking system. Boeing modified its design before OFT-2, adding a hinged reentry cover beneath the nose cone to protect the docking port during atmospheric entry. This was tested on OFT-2. In contrast, SpaceX's reusable Dragon nose cone protects its docking port during launch and reentry. The capsule uses the Boeing lightweight ablator for its heat shield and is powered by 2.9 kilowatts of electricity from solar cells provided by Spectrolab, a Boeing subsidiary. A 5.8-foot aeroskirt is integrated into the Atlas V launch vehicle adapter, providing aerodynamic stability and reducing shock waves from the rocket's front. The spacecraft's propulsion system, built by Aerojet Rocketdyne, includes 64 engines, 12 MR, 14 J RCS thrusters on the capsule for reentry orientation, 52 thrusters on the service module for attitude control and orbital maneuvers, and 4 RS, 88 engines for launch escape capability, with thrusters grouped in four doghouses around the service module. This overwhelming number of engines helps Starliner achieve high maneuverability during docking with the ISS. Boeing designed the capsule for ground landings, marking the first crewed capsule mission from the U.S. after reentry. Three parachutes slow the capsule to about four miles per hour, followed by six airbags to cushion the landing at one of four primary locations. As you can see, 
The design of the Starliner is very sophisticated and complex. However, because of this, small errors occur more often. This complexity also makes it difficult for engineers to pinpoint the cause when problems arise, and we have all witnessed the consequences of it. The Boeing Starliner capsule's first crewed mission launched on June 5, 2024, carrying NASA astronauts Barry E. Wilmore and Sunita Williams from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station to the International Space Station. The mission was initially planned to last eight days, concluding with a landing in the American Southwest on June 14. However, as the spacecraft neared the ISS, a malfunction occurred with Starliner's thrusters. After more than two months of investigation, NASA deemed it was too risky to return its astronauts to Earth on board the Starliner. Instead, the Boeing spacecraft returned uncrewed on July 7, 2024, and the astronauts will ride down on the SpaceX Crew-9 spacecraft in March 2025. This puts the vehicle's ability to achieve safety certification in question. Before the propulsion issues with the crew flight test, the Boeing spacecraft's first operational mission, Starliner-1, was scheduled for launch in 2025. NASA astronauts Scott Tingle and Mike Fink, along with Canadian Space Agency astronaut Joshua Kutrick, have been assigned to the Starliner-1 mission. However, at the moment, even NASA is uncertain about the next flight schedule of the spacecraft. NASA officials stated on October 15th that the timing of Starliner's next potential crewed mission to the ISS in 2025 will be determined once a better understanding of Boeing's path to system certification is established. It's hard to understand why a veteran company with experience in two of NASA's most important programs would perform so poorly, while a young company like SpaceX continues to achieve great success. Well, it turns out the answer has been right in front of us all along. In the early stages after NASA awarded SpaceX and Boeing contracts to build crew transportation systems, they sent four astronauts to work with these two companies. These are Sunita Williams, Robert Binkin, Eric Bow, and Douglas Hurley. Doug Hurley said that when working with Boeing, their engineers were often overconfident and worked in a non-urgent manner. Not only that, but it even seemed like management was not involved in the project. It was all about managing dollars and cents from Boeing's perspective, he said. Hurley also noticed a different treatment of astronauts by the two companies' engineers. He said, There was an arrogance with them that you certainly didn't see at SpaceX. When the SpaceX engineers were available, they were enthusiastic to receive feedback from the NASA astronauts, eager to collaborate with them and attentive to their suggestions. In contrast, Boeing engineers appeared uninterested in hearing from the four commercial crew astronauts. The differences in SpaceX and Boeing's work attitudes are immediately evident in their results. SpaceX has always had an attitude of not being afraid of failure, being willing to accept mistakes, and always accepting feedback. Thanks to that spirit, they have developed at a very fast pace and are always at the forefront of innovation. As for Boeing, it seems that they have lost something important, which is the spirit of an engineer. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.